Hi everyone, I'm Raina the Raindrop, and today I'd like to talk to you about the water cycle. Did you have a glass of water today? If you did, you drink water that is nearly as old as planet Earth itself. That same water that you drink was around when your parents were born, and even when dinosaurs walked the Earth. It may have even had a shark swimming through it hundreds of years ago. You see, Earth has only a certain amount of water that has been used over and over again for billions of years. This recycling of water through time is controlled by the water cycle. The water cycle describes the path that water follows as it moves around our planet. Earth's water is constantly moving between rivers, lakes, and oceans, the atmosphere, and the land. And as water moves through this cycle, it also changes its form between a liquid, a gas, and a solid. The water cycle can also be called the hydrologic cycle because hydro means water in Greek. There are four main steps to the water cycle. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. The water cycle does not have a real starting point, but will begin in the ocean since that's where most of Earth's water is. First is evaporation. The sun is the real boss of the water cycle. It provides the heat or energy needed to make the water cycle work. The sun heats up the water in our rivers, lakes, and oceans, causing the water's temperature to rise. Slowly, this heat turns liquid water into a gas called water vapor, which floats up into the air. Since water vapor has no color, we can't see this process happening with our own eyes. If you've ever left a glass of water out, especially on a hot day, you may have noticed that after a few hours, some of that water is gone. That's because some of the water has been evaporated into the atmosphere. Second is condensation. As evaporated water vapor rises up high into the sky, it becomes cooler. Once it gets cold enough, the water vapor turns back into liquid water droplets, which join together to form clouds. This process is called condensation, and it's the opposite of evaporation. You've probably seen condensation in your everyday life. Maybe you've seen drops of water called dew on the grass in your front lawn in the morning, or you've been able to see your breath outside on a very cold day. This is condensation at work. Third is precipitation. Precipitation occurs when so much water has condensed that the air cannot hold it anymore. The tiny droplets that make clouds combine with each other and grow into bigger water droplets. When these droplets get so heavy that they can no longer float in the air, the water falls back down to earth in the form of precipitation. There are many types of precipitation, such as rain, which is liquid water, snow, which is frozen water, sleet, which is a combination of both rain and snow, and hail, which are big pieces of ice. The fourth and final step is collection. When water falls back down to earth as precipitation, it may fall directly into rivers, lakes, and oceans. But some of this precipitation will fall onto the land, where it will either flow downhill over the landscape as runoff, or soak into the ground to become the groundwater that flows beneath our feet. All water that is collected on Earth's surface will eventually be evaporated, starting the water cycle all over again. You may be wondering, why do we care about the water cycle? Well, the main reason we care is because all living things, from humans to bugs to flowers, need water to survive. Humans and animals need water to drink, and plants need water to grow. Us humans also use water for many things in our day-to-day -day lives, like washing, cooking, 
and even fun activities like swimming. This is why it's important that scientists understand how water moves around planet Earth through the water cycle. To help us summarize what we've learned about the water cycle, my friend Amanda is going to show us a dance. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda and I'm going to teach you the water cycle dance. First, we'll wiggle our hands up for evaporation. Then clap your hands together for condensation. Then wiggle your hands down for precipitation. And then put your arms in a big circle for collection like you're a lake or an ocean. All right, now that you've got that, let's do it again, but together. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. Now you know the water cycle dance. And that's it. Thanks for joining me, Rainer the Raindrop, today for a lesson about the water cycle.